Have you ever wanted to translate text from a language like Spanish, for example, into English or to the other direction? This happens all the time and I hear this from people I work with, students. What we're gonna do in this example is we're gonna use AWS to create a translation tool from scratch. So let's go ahead and uh, get into that environment and get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the AWS Management Console and I'm gonna type in Cloud9. Cloud9 is one of my favorite environments for doing uh, software development and I'm gonna create a new environment, okay? First thing I'm gonna do is create a uh, development environment. We'll call this development, and we'll just call this uh, my development environment for AWS. And by default, I can just leave the, the, the settings here. Create a new instance for EC2, make a micro instance. If I'm a student, this is a free tier eligible instance, and automatically it'll time out after 30 minutes, which is a great um, uh, cost savings tool. Okay, we're all set. This will take just a second. Now, while this is spinning up, one of the things that I'm gonna do is I'm also going to go over to a GitHub repo, and I'm gonna be using that GitHub repo to check back code and use it so that I can develop against uh, both the Cloud9 environment and also save my work in a source code repository. So I'm gonna go to GitHub, and I will go to a course that I'm creating called Python, uh, AWS Python Pragmatic Real World. There we go. And I'm gonna click on clone or download. Here we go, copy this. And by this time, this environment should be almost set up. And I'm gonna take that repo and I'm gonna clone it locally. Now, one of the things I'm gonna have to do is set up SSH keys. And this is a, a pretty straightforward process on Cloud9 and we're gonna go ahead and do that first. Okay, Cloud9 looks like it's all set up and ready to go. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna move up this window a little bit and I'm gonna type in the word SSH keygen dash T RSA. And this will create SSH keys. And this will allow me to make encrypted connections between uh, GitHub and this local environment. So I'll go ahead and uh, type in uh, cat tilde slash dot SSH id underscore rsa dot pub there you go so now that i've got this uh, ssh key set up i'm going to go over to this repo and under my name i'm going to select settings i'm going to go to ssh and gpg settings make a new key and we'll call this demo uh, november 26 i'll just paste that in there great now that i got those keys set up it'll ask me for uh, authentication and from here now that I've got that set up, uh, I can go back to my repo and I can uh, write code back and forth between this repo. So here we go. Again, I'll copy this repo and I will type in git clone. Great, there we go. And it's gonna ask me to connect and I'm going to connect. And now I've got a directory here and I have uh, a, a location where I can start writing code. So the first thing I'm gonna do it, to use my very powerful uh, environment is I'm going to CD into that directory and I'm gonna make a directory called source. And inside this source directory, I'll change inside of there. And what I can do is, uh, is go file, new file. And what we'll do is we'll call this, this file uh, translate.py. So I'm gonna say save as in the source directory translate.py okay and from here we're pretty close to being ready to start writing some code but i'm going to do one other thing which is i'm going to create a virtual environment and this allows me to isolate python to a specific directory and the first thing i'm going to do is type in python 3 dash m v e n v and this says make a virtual environment and then I'm gonna tell it where. So typically on a new instance like this, I'll put it in tilde slash dot V E N V. And this will kind of hide it away for me so I don't have to really think about it. And then I'll source it. So I'll type in source tilde slash dot V E N V bin activate. There we go. 
And now that I've sourced that, if I type in which Python 3, you'll see now it's gonna use a Python 3 that's set up just for my project. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna immediately uh, see if I can install a tool that will make my life easier, which is uh, IPython. So I'll type in pip install IPython. And this allows me to do an, interact, an interactive shell. Okay, it says uh, it would recommend I upgrade to pip, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay. And from here, if I type in IPython, I can try out the Bodo library, which is gonna do the heavy lifting to talk to the AWS translation service. So it's not installed, not a problem. I can install this, so I can say pip install Bodo3. Great, that's all set. And now that Bodo3 is installed, uh, I can again go back here, type in IPython and, and test that out. Does that work, Bodo3? Great, so now that I have access to Bodo3, I can do some very powerful things. So what I'm gonna do first here is I'm going to, at the very top here, type in imports uh, Bodo3. And next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make an instance to a translation API. So I'll go here, client Bodo3. Uh, and then next, uh, all I need to do is uh, translate some kind of text. And so what I'll need to do is put a text phrase here. So we'll go ahead and put some text in here. And how about um, we'll translate uh, my name. <clears throat> we'll say my name is, is uh, we'll say the target language will be English. So I'll, I'll put something in Spanish. So my, hola, mi nombre es Noah. There we go. And next I can go ahead and make an instance of that client object that I created. Type in translate underscore text and then put in this text uh, variable. There we go. And then the only other thing I need to do is say source language code and we can say auto. What this means is that automatically detect what the language is coming from but then target, uh, convert it over to uh, the language that I'm gonna select which is English. So figure out what language it is. It could be any number of languages. And then when I pass it in here, translate uh, this into English. Great, so here I go. And I can go and uh, run this. And then if I put the results of this into a variable like that, uh, I can actually print out the results. Okay, now that that's done, I'm pretty much ready to go. I can test this code out. So I, I'm gonna stay in this console, and again, because I've installed it into a virtual environment, I can just run this as a script. So I can say Python translate, and it says no module Boto3. That's because I didn't select Python 3, which is the Python that's in my um, virtual environment, and now it works. And so you can see that it spits out this translated text uh, code, and you can see that it comes in this payload right here, translated text. So we can clean it up a little bit by just specifically uh, taking that part out. So we can say, uh, I only want translated text here, and then I'll run it again. And we missed a D, so run it again here, save this. And you can see it's saved when this one goes to an X. There you go, pretty useful. But one of the most useful things that you can do, and this is really helpful because this could get you past some problem you're having, but to make it even more useful, let's go ahead and convert this into a command line tool. So, so we have something that's pretty cool now. So what we can do to, to start with here is, um, why don't uh, I uh, go ahead and check this into my repo? So I'm gonna type in git add translate there we go, and then I'm gonna say git commit and adding translate example. And from here, I can I can now put in what my username is, so I'll go ahead and do that. I'll say git config username Noah gift. And then I can also put in my email address. Here we go. And I'll go ahead and put in my email address, which is noah.gift at gmail.com. And then finally, I can amend that commit by resetting the author. There we go. And we'll go ahead and do a control O, 
I'll write it, great, I'll exit this. And now that I've got that set up, I can say git push. Okay, it's all set up, it's pushed, and if I check this repo, that code should exist there now. So we've got some, we've got a source code repo, or a directory, and then translates in there, and I got a good translate example. Okay, to make it more useful though, let's convert this into a command line tool, and we'll use a library called click. So I'm gonna need to install that. I'm gonna type in pip install click. Okay, and now that I've installed click, a, a couple things that we'll need to do is we'll need to import it at the top here. So I'll type in import click, and I'll also need to just bring this down a little bit. And then uh, really it's pretty straightforward. What you do to write a click function is you type in the word click as a decorator, and then you type in a click command. And then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna need to wrap this up into a function. So I'm going to, again, kind of move this down a little bit and uh, maybe shrink this a little bit as well. And we'll put this function, we'll call this uh, action. Okay, and we'll, we'll, we'll need to accept a phrase, okay? <clears throat> and up here, actually, this won't be command, this will be option, this will be what I accept. And I'll, uh, in order to accept something, I'll type in uh, a phrase. So I wanna translate something over and over again, I wanna make this useful. And I'll, whoever is using this, I'll give them a prompt that says, uh, put in a phrase in any language, to translate, okay? And then from here, I also can put a help message if I want. Uh, we'll, we'll go through here and um, put in a help message that says, uh, if somebody asks for help, this is uh, a tool that translates text. Okay, that looks pretty good. This looks good, I can put a colon here and now I can um, tab this in. I don't need that text because it's gonna be passed in. And then what I'm gonna do next here is uh, I'm going to use a pretty cool command that allows me to do syntax highlighting. So uh, what I'll do is I'll type in click.echo and I'll say click.style. And what this does is it allows me to um, echo out a message, we'll call this translate phrase, and I can use this F string syntax. So this just is a template. So I can take the word that's passed in here, which is this phrase, and what I'm doing here in this uh, translate section is I'm going to uh, make the foreground of it red. So so I'll make it so that it's kind of obvious that, that I'm, that I'm passing in some kind of a message. And then uh, I'm gonna get the results of this um, payload here, right? <clears throat> and then the next thing I'll do is say, um, <clears throat> we'll, we'll call this text, and this will be, this is what I printed out earlier, right? And that will be that translated text. And then really we're almost done the only other thing I need to do, and I'll make this a little bit smaller so it fits on the screen. The only other thing I need to do is I need to uh, echo out what that message, that translated message is. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna say click echo, and I'll say click dot style, and put in an F string here, put in result, or I'm sorry, text. And then in this case, we'll put in the um, the the hot, the highlighting here. So I'll, I'll go through here and I'll and I'll say um, maybe background is equal to blue, and then the uh, foreground is equal to white. There you go, and that looks pretty good. And now to run it, you do this thing in Python, which, which is a um, let's see, we got a little problem here. It says use text before assignment. That is correct, so this needs to be phrase. So we can see the syntax uh, highlighting here is uh, is actually pretty good. Okay, and then I just need to put, put this um, fancy phrase here, which is a Python convention 
that allows me to run this as a command line tool. So it's if under under name under under equal equal. And this it, really not a lot to know here. This is just something you do when you write command line tools. Okay, perfect. And now I just need to call the name of that function right here. So I'm gonna type in the word action, just like that. Okay, now that I've got that set up, uh, let's see, is there a bug here? It says no. So you'll, you'll get this sometimes with um, these fancy libraries and you can just uh, ignore that error. So, all right, I'm going to type in, uh, in this case, uh, let's actually call this tool. Uh, let's actually copy this and let's just put it into a new file so we have two versions. So we can, we can say file, new file, and we'll call this uh, translate CLI. So translate CLI and dot .py. Okay, and then this other one, so we can paste this in here. So we've got this one saved, and this other one, we'll just kind of back it out. We'll just go back and we'll just we'll just go through and erase what we had in here earlier. Perfect. And now it looks pretty close to what I had before. There we go, we'll save that. Now that I've got that, I have this command line tool, it's ready to go, I have a separate one. So I'm gonna type in again, Python 3, and I'll type in translate, but I'll type in the CLI. And if I just don't do anything, it'll actually ask me for a phrase. So I'm gonna say, what do I wanna translate? So uh, I don't know, why don't I type in something new, like um, I like to write software, so I'll say, uh, me gusta escribir software. Okay. And it says, translate phrase, me gusta escribir software. I like writing software. And then if I want to run the help menu, you can see here, I've got a help menu. And I also could just specifically put in a phrase. So I could again here and say, uh, I don't know, um, uh, me, uh, me llamo. Or, or 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 mi nombre here we go we'll say mi nombre es Noah s Noah okay does that work uh oh it didn't like it because I didn't put it into strings string format so let's go ahead and do that let's put this into one big string right so that's how it's parsed and maybe we could later add this as a there we go my name is Noah so I've got a now a reusable command line tool I could start putting in other languages in fact let's test it out let's go to Google Translate here let's go to Google Translate and uh, let's see does it work on other uh, languages let's try um, how about uh, English so we'll translate from English to uh, let's pick a different language how about Russian and we'll say, uh, my name is Noah. Okay, great. And uh, let's copy this text here. And let's see if this works. No promises, but maybe. All right, we'll auto detect that this is Russian and translate it. And it did not uh, know how to translate Russian. Okay, well, let's try a different language. What about, um, let's see italian maybe let's try italian will it let's see if we can pick that one up there we go let's try italian and whoa didn't like that so i'm going to make sure i paste it <clears throat> paste it correctly i just have a cut and paste error here there we go sometimes i'll do this i'll paste it back into a browser like that to clean it up and then I'll put this in there, and there we go. It's able to automatically detect um, Italian. So it doesn't have all the languages that are available in Google Translate, but it does a pretty good job. And so in just a few minutes, we're able to go through here and create not just a translation tool, which I, I get a lot from students and uh, people I work with, but we also made it into a reusable tool and I can use it for lots of different um, problems. And later, if I wanted to, I could turn it into an AWS Lambda function and maybe turn it into a web service. All right, uh, we're ready to go. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again soon.